So the 200 kilogram lunar lander is descending onto the moon's surface with a velocity of 6 meters per second when its retro engine is fired. If the engine produces a thrust T for 4 seconds, which varies with time as shown and then cuts off, calculate the velocity of the land when T equals 5 seconds, assuming that it has not yet landed. Gravitational acceleration at the moon's surface is 1.62 meters per second squared. So what we're looking for here is the final velocity of the system um, after those five seconds. And we're given the initial velocity of the system and also the forces that are going to be acting on it, including that thrust there. So it only makes sense to use the equation for linear momentum, um, obviously because these things are moving in straight lines or in a linear fashion. And that equation is... one here. So the integral between your two different points of interest, T1 and T2, um, is then the sum of the forces dt is equal to the change in linear momentum or g. Okay, And if you want you can rewrite this as the final minus the initial momentum, so g2 minus g1. So in our case um, position 1 is going to be when t is equal to 0 seconds because we're given all the information about that point in time. We know it's descending at a 6 meter per second rate um, and we I know that all of these forces kind of kick in after that t equals 0 second mark. Alright, so let's note also our velocity. Now I'm going to use um, Cartesian coordinate system xy. So if we know that it's descending initially at 6 meters per second, I'm going to put this in as a negative 6 for the velocity. All right. So our second point in time is a point of interest. All right. And we want to know uh, from the question what's happening for the velocity when t is equal to 5 seconds. So that's what I'm going to consider. And the velocity at that point is what I'm trying to find. All right. So now we just need to go to the effort of filling out this equation with the things that we don't know yet. Um, so one of the main things is the force in here. Um, since it's the sum of the forces, what we need to do is draw a free body diagram, um, and then we should be able to sum off that diagram. Okay, so let's draw it over here. Okay. So if this is my lander, I'm just going to draw it as a block. I'm going to have obviously this thrust force acting on it, which I'll call T. And I'm also going to have the weight of the um, lander itself acting down. And that's going to be mg. Alright, so we should be able to calculate what um, mg actually is. Um, because we're given the mass and also what gravity is on the moon back up in the question. So we're told up here that mass is 200. <coughs> sorry. And also that the gravity acting is 1.62 meters per second squared. So substituting in, we can write this as 200 times 1.62. Um, and it comes out to be 324 newtons of weight. Alright, so coming back over here to our um, equation, we can start substituting in some numbers. So we're going to be looking at the integral from t1, which is equal to 0 seconds, to t2, which was 5 seconds, and it's got to sub in the sum of the forces, so remember we're assuming an xy coordinate system like this. So we're going to have positive t and negative weight. All right. I'll just write it as t minus mg. Going to leave dt in there, and it's going to be equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So remember, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So at the end, we're going to have the mass of m multiplied by the velocity at the end, which we're going to leave as v2 minus the, sorry, same mass, m, but multiplied by the velocity that we have at the beginning, which is negative 6. So 
I'll just make, write this as V1 for now, since this is all pretty much written in letters. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is separate this um, integral out. So it's going to become the integral from t equals 0 to t equals 5 of t dt minus, remember that you can separate these into two different parts, mg dt. Alright, and I can now write this as m2, sorry, mv2 take v1. Alright. So a trick here is for these integrals, um, it's essentially looking at what the area under the curve is um, for the two different plots. Okay, so you can treat these as area under curve of force versus time plot. So that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to calculate rather than having to evaluate the whole integral. And this should be t equals 5, sorry. Alright, so let's start with this first one, which is the integral of the thrust with respect to time. And if we scroll up here, remember that we're going to be interested in what's happening between t equals 0 and our final position is when t is equal to 5 seconds. So after 4 seconds, we know that this thing cuts off. So that's what our plot would look like up until our final time. So we can calculate what the area under the curve would be. It's going to be the area of this triangle plus the area of the rectangle. Okay. So area of a triangle is a half times um, base, which is going to be 2, times the height, which is 800. And this is the rectangle, so it's just going to be 2 by 800. So let's substitute that in. Okay, so that's this first part. So now we just need to think about what's happening with this gravity and how it changes with time. And of course it's not, it's going to be constant. So if we were to draw an equivalent plot of how gravity, or weight I should say, changed with time, our plot would look something like this. Alright, this is force. So we know that our force is 324 newtons. And over all of time, it's always going to be constant. So from 0 to 5 seconds, that's what our plot would look like. So if we want to calculate the area under this curve, it's just going to be a rectangle. It's going to be 342, sorry, sorry, it should be 24, multiplied by those 5 seconds. Alright, and we've got a negative in here, so make sure we carry that forward. Alright. So, now we just need to substitute what's going on in the other side, and I might just move this up. So, it's going to be equal to the mass of our um, lander, which we said was 200 kilograms, multiplied by the final velocity, which is what we're looking for, V2, minus that initial velocity that we said was, oop, here we go, negative 6. Alright, so that's our equation, and now it's just a matter of solving it. So if you put all of these numbers together on the left-hand side, you end up with 780. On the right-hand side, if you expand the bracket, you get 200 V2 plus 1200. And rearranging just to get V2 equals... Your final answer should come out to be about negative 2.1 meters per second. And of course, since it came out to be a negative value, that means it's going in the negative direction, which is going to be downwards according to how we um, defined our coordinate system. So that's the final answer um, for what the velocity of this lander is after those five seconds. Alright, see you in the next one.